What's up everyone and welcome to Friday's edition of Reptile News. It's finally Friday. I'm so glad it's Friday and we got some science type stuff to talk about today. So you know it's probably going to be short and entertaining. Now we're going to start off with a new study from the University of Georgia aimed specifically at boas and king cobras and the inclusion of genes for legs. Now it's been no big secret for a long long time now that snakes used to have legs. I mean there's some physical characteristics on modern day snakes that suggest this. But one thing that really sticks out out at me with this particular article is they're saying over the billions and billions of reproductive cycles the snakes have gone through over the years technically speaking they shouldn't really find any evidence in their genes of leg growth or maintenance or whatever the proper word to use is but they do in fact still see this in snakes today now one researcher goes on to say that a lot of the genetic circuitry that is meant for the leg development may also also be vitally important for the reproductive organs which is maybe one reason why they retained this genetic trait and now we're going to move on to California we're going to move on to 29 Palms Marine Base where a project's been going on for nine years a reintroduction project and it really makes me excited to read about this kind of stuff apparently the Marines have bred 500 desert tortoises now if you're unaware what a desert tortoise is if you've never been to California or you've never read about tortoises I recommend you look it up. They're awesome animals. There are state reptile. And ever since the inclusion of a respiratory infection to the wild population, have just about all but been decimated out in the wild. Well, for the last nine years, these 500 tortoises have been fenced off in a protected five acre parcel and last month 35 of them were released back into the wild. Now these 35 are released in an area where military traffic is not allowed. You see apparently they list Humvees as one of the problems with these turtles um, being run over obviously and other reintroduction efforts at other bases were not that successful because what they believe were the tortoises were too small when they were released so they held these ones back a lot longer before they released them. So that's awesome news coming from the military out of California. I can't wait to read more about this as we move into the future. And now we're going to move on to Homestead, Florida with kind of more sciencey stuff, but a little bit sadder, um, something that actually needs a reintroduction program. The American Crocodile. Researchers are concerned because the number of nests outside the nuclear power plant dropped to nine this year from 22 last year, 100 hatchlings this year from 400 last year. Researchers say these numbers represent the fewest numbers that they've counted in a decade. They say they believe that rising temperatures and less rainfall is partially to blame here by raising the salinity in the water. Now while they do say an estimated 400 crocodiles are moving in and out of the wetlands on average like normal, it may just be too salty for them to hang out there. Researchers say the American crocodile could handle salinity levels up to 40 parts per thousand and so far this year they've got readings up to 90 parts per thousand in those canals. And that's where I'm going to end today's show with a question. What do you think about all this science stuff, both the good and bad? leave a text comment down below and if you'd like to read anything about what I talked about today those links are right down below here in the description and as always if you're still watching my name is Jason White now you know what's going on in the reptile world be good to each other and we'll see you next week have a great weekend